come down. Your name is? Emma. Emma. Come and stand over here, please, Emma. Your name is? Peter. Peter. Oh, Fraser. Fraser. Peter and Fraser over here, please. Peter, come around here, please. Your name is? Louise. Louise. So, Louise, if you stand there. Now, take up positions for arm wrestling. Now, I want you to listen carefully. The rules of this game, for which there is a reward, <laughs> the following. The winners of this game will be the ones that manage to touch the desk six times in the next, say, 20 seconds. That should be enough. OK, are you ready? Go. Oh, I can hear some cracking of bones. <laughs> OK, carry on. Time's running out. Very good. You're still smiling. You're still smiling. OK, that's it. That's it. Well done. Well done. You can go back to your seats. Well, unfortunately, nobody made it up to six. But you could have done. It's actually quite easy. All I said was that the winners will be the ones that touch the desk six times. There's nothing to stop you all winning. <laughs> so you see, when faced with limited information, in this case about our opponent, we don't always make the best choice. We tend to compete rather than cooperate. So if that's for two of us, a one-on-one -on -one situation, what do we do as a group? I want to imagine you're going home every night, safe from school, and you have choice between two roads. Now, Let's imagine you want to get home quickly from school, so you want to take the road that has less cars or bicycles on it, the less crowded road. So you're doing this every night, and so is everyone else. So you've got to try and second guess what everyone else is trying to do. Because if you make the same decision as everyone else, that will be the worst possible decision. In fact, there's no best strategy for forming a decision. Because if everybody used it, they'd all make the same decision. And it would be the worst strategy. So in this situation, we try and learn from the past. We try not to make the same mistakes as in the past. We, th did we win last night or the night before? What did we do? Well, maybe things have changed now. We, we all have different ways of processing exactly the same information. And we tend to look for patterns in what's happened before. Just as when we look at the moon, we tend to see a face, even though there's no face there. We like to make sense of information, to, to try and see some kind of pattern in it. Now, it's not just the case for traveling home that you want to try and be in the minority, say. Also in the case financial markets, there's another minority game. See all these people? We're getting quite excited about the information they're receiving and making decisions. And they're not all making the same decision. But in this case, as in the case with the road, it pays to be in a minority. Because it pays to be a buyer if everyone else is selling, or a seller if everyone else is buying. So in both of these cases, in the traffic and in the case of the financial markets, you want to be in a minority. But it's not always that way. Let's think about going to a party. Now in that case, it tends to be that we like to go to the party with the most people at it. We want to go with the majority.
And even though there are two equally good parties, somebody always seems to lose out. And one party seems to dominate. Now, what I'm really interested in looking at is what happens if we make that decision over and over again. And we look at patterns in time of what have happened in the past, or our experience of the past, and we try and predict the future. So let's just see what exactly we do. I'd like seven volunteers, please. Maybe um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you could just come down, seven of you, there, this region. One, two, three. As long as there are seven of you, it's okay. Need another one. Would you like to come down? So let's stand you. Your name is? Vanessa. Vanessa. Stand over here on this line, yellow line, facing inwards. Your name is? Harriet. Harriet. Come over here, please, next to Vanessa. Your name is? Louis. Louis. Come over here, please, Louis. Harriet. I'm just going to move you up and put Louis in between. Your name is? Daniel. Daniel. Come and stand here. And the other three just stand on the end there. On the white line, facing towards the desk, please. We're going to play a game. The game we're going to play is the following. You have to make a decision. You have to make a choice between two colours. In front of you, there's a line that's red. Behind you, there's a line that's blue. And when you hear this sound, you have to jump. You have to jump to the line where the least number of people are. You're trying to get away from everyone else, okay? You don't want to jump where everyone else is. Everybody happy? There are prizes. <laughs> Let's just pretend that we've run it once and say one, two, three, four, five people jumped to the red line and two people jumped to the blue line, so the blue ones won. Okay? Everybody ready? Okay, let's see what we have. Three on blue, four on red, so blue wins. Back to the white line, please. Red. Sweets. Who won? Here we go again. Ready? Okay, three on red, four on blue. Remember, this is the pattern from the past. So the three reds win. Back to the white line, please. Okay, three on red, four on blue again. Prize to the reds. White line. Four red, five red, two blues. I saw that. <laughs> 